Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jesse Bloom with CBRE, and I was tasked with finding our brokers and presenting them for the roundtable today. So up first is Mike Lash. Uh, Mike is a retail specialist with CBRE. He has 12 years of commercial real estate experience. Uh, before CBRE, he was an asset manager with Hulu Aloha Companies, where he managed the financial performance of a diverse portfolio of commercial properties. Fellow U of A guy. I thought I'd start today by uh, talking about some of the retail trends that I'm seeing in the market. Um, right now, retailers are taking a look at their existing store footprints and trying to right-size those stores. And a lot of that has to do with this omni-channel reta retail environment that we work in now, internet sales, distribution, and so forth. As a result of this process, I expect to see some additional space become available on the market as they, they fine-tune their brick-and-mortar operations. Um, another key trend is the consolidation and mergers of retailers. This can be seen in the office supply sector. Uh, discounters, for example, the Dollar Tree, um, uh, the Dollar Tree general dollar acquisition of Family Dollar. It would be interesting to see how that shakes out and what space becomes available as a result. And the same thing with the mattress companies, uh, with mattress firms acquisition of Bedmart. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with those locations throughout the area. We expect those, uh, some of those spaces to become available. Um, also the proliferation of restaurants. A lot of the activity in the market right now is quick service restaurants and they're all looking for the same thing. 2,500 to 3,500 square feet, strong daytime population, uh, core areas of town. Also, the burger battles of years past, I, I like to call it now the pizza wars. It seems like we have a lot of different pizza concepts, including Pizza Studio, Pyology, Pionic Pizza, Humble Pie. They're all scouring the market looking for sites. I guess somebody figured out there's really high margins in pizza. <laughs> Box users are also starting to show, uh, show some signs of life. An example of that is Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, second store in our market, the northeast corner of uh, Broadway and uh, Wilmot. Other box users, whether they're new to town or already in town, are starting to pick their heads up, scouring the market, looking for sites, oftentimes where none exist, which leads me to my next point. Um, I think that there's gonna be a tremendous amount of redevelopment opportunity going forward. I'm glad I agree with Dr. Nelson on that. I guess us Virginia Tech guys are pretty smart. Um, <laughs> you know, some examples of these redevelopment opportunities are um, Bourne's project at the northeast corner of Broadway and Wilmot. And then at the other end of the spectrum on Broadway is the northeast corner of uh, Broadway and Craycroft, which the former Mervyn site with Benison um, Capital out of New York redeveloped, it's now 100% occupied at premium rents. And I expect that to continue in Broadway and other key retail areas in town. Grant and Tancoverde is another example of a successful redevelopment project. Uh, the office building across the street from Target on Grant is now uh, leveled. There's a new retail building going up. The lineup in there includes Verizon, Chipotle, Jersey Mike, and Pizza Studio. Um, also, that corner is slated for redevelopment with a Chick-fil-A. Uh, new significant construction activity. Everybody is excited about the Marana Premium Outlet Mall's opening. I'm expecting the real estate community to dress a little snappier going forward. Um, the Simon Property Group uh, is breaking ground for a 360,000 square foot premium outlet mall, anticipating 100 name brand stores at a cost of about $90 million. Houghton Town Center uh, opened uh, this past winter. Uh, Super Walmart had a very strong opening, which really added validity to this area as a retail destination. If the housing forecasts are accurate and the rooftops pop up in this area, expect to see a lot more retail to follow. And Tucson Marketplace at the Bridges, Aquino and I-10, uh, I know that they're working with several retailers for phase two uh, of that project, so expect some announcements uh, soon. Significant retail investments, the Lowe's Home Center at Ina and Thornydale sold in June for $21 million, $110 a square foot. Of course, as we all know, Elcon Center sold to the Kroenke Group in May for $81.8 million, $168 a square foot. Silverado Plaza at uh, Broadway and Houghton is in escrow with a Blackstone DDR a joint venture for $172 a square foot. Also new to the market, Paloma Village at Campbell and Sunrise. Uh, expect that to command 
premium pricing because the rent roll is very strong, uh, strong tenants, strong rents. And I anticipate more shopping centers uh, sales to come in the next 12 months. Uh, and I think a lot of it's going to be uh, investors taking advantage of the still low interest rate environment and seeking higher yields in redevelopment opportunities or underperforming assets. In conclusion, uh, typically a vacancy rate of under 10% is considered a strong market. CBRE is reporting a vacancy rate of 8.5%. However, um, there's still a lot of room to go on rent growth to get us to those um, peak rents that we saw at the top of the market. And I would expect with the constrained supply and the demand from these retailers that we should see some upward pressure on rents. Thank you very much.